Welcome back. And this lesson is going to be a workout. We are going to learn the loop cut offset tool. So let's go ahead and make some dumbbell weights. We can start off by just doing file, new, general. Or if you're just now opening Blender, just do new file, general. And we do not need Suzanne, so let's go ahead and delete Suzanne. And for this one, we're going to use a reference image again. So I'll give you a link to this picture below. Also have a download that you can download. And then once you've got it downloaded, just go to your front view with numpad one and do shift A. And we're gonna do a image reference. Go ahead and click on the dumbbell and bring it in. And it's gonna come in really, really tiny. So just go to this little tab and just change the size to maybe something like 50. There we go. And so now we've got our dumbbells and go ahead and go to your right over here, rename this reference image. And today we're gonna make this dumbbell set out of a cylinder. So just do shift A and mesh, and we're gonna do cylinder. And you can see it's really, really tiny right here, uh, but we need it to be a lot larger. Uh, so 32 for the segments, let's just double that. So do like 64. And that's just gonna make it a lot smoother. And then let's rotate it on the Y axis 90 degrees like that. There we go. And now we're just going to kind of eyeball this, maybe make the depth, you know, all the way to the end like that. We'll just do 50. And for the radius, just crank that up until it's about the top of the top dumbbell. I'm going to do Alt Z so I can see through it and just put it right on the top of there, somewhere like that. So we got 64, 10.7, and 50 is the numbers I have with a rotation of 90 degrees on the Y. And there we go. So now we can start doing our loop offset. So let's go into edit mode. And last time we talked about the loop cut, which you can just make a loop cut, but there's a little triangle here in the corner. And so any of the icons that have little triangle, you can click and hold. And there's another one here. So this is offset edge loop cut. So go ahead and click on that. But notice nothing happens. And that's because it needs you to tell it an edge first. So let's just do a loop cut control or you can do control R and just do a loop cut. You know, right there in the center is fine. And now since this loop cut is selected, if we switch over to our offset edge loop, and so now that we have this edge selected, we can click and drag and there we go. So now it's just going to make like an offset around the edge you have and you can cap the endpoints if you want, but we don't have any open endpoints, so that's not going to matter. Uh, you can click even and that's going to set these uh, apart evenly spaced. Um, our cylinder is pretty even here, so uh, it's not going to be too drastic of a uh, change there. And then for the factor, you can just slide that and that's going to be, you know, how far out it's going to be. So we can just click and drag that out and just kind of land it somewhere right where this little, uh, little, little end of our, our bar meets this first little uh, weight clamp. And now what we need to do is reselect this center line. Um, we could try and do it with the tool selected, but I've noticed that it, it creates a lot of new geometry. So you could click on this and then double click or alt click on this line because we want to make sure we have the entire loop selected. And then we can go back to our tool, offset loop, click and drag, and then do it out to this point. Essentially what we're trying to do is make little slits down the weights of our dumbbell. And so we can go here, we can click that and, you know, double click this and then go back to our tool. But there's a better way to do it. So just go ahead and slide these out. And what usually what I'll do is keep my mouse or my tool on the select box and then just select the center uh, line here. And instead of doing control R, which is our loop cut, we're going to do control shift R, which is our loop offset. So that's what I do. And it this really just helps for not creating um, geometry that's overlapping on itself. So again, just you know, highlight the edge, control shift R for loop offset. Grab the middle one, control shift R. And there we go. So that's looking pretty good. And now let's just double click on these lines, just hold shift 
and double click or alt click on these lines right here. All, so you should have one, two, three, four, five selected there. And we'll do the same thing over here. One, two, and you wanna make sure that you're clicking, you know, not here, but actually in the middle of the line like that. And notice I've clicked right here and I've got, it's like it's highlighted, but it's kind of hard to see, but it's it's highlighted, but it's not. So that immediately tells me that there's some overlapping geometry right here. So what we can do uh, just to be safe is go to A to select all, go to mesh, clean up, and merge by distance. And there we go. Yes, yeah, so we had 256 vertices. So there was definitely some overlapping geometry. And that just comes with the... Uh, the offset loop cut sometimes. So be very careful with this tool. But that should have cleaned up our geometry. Let's go back and deselect with Alt-A, and that will unselect everything. And so say if we wanted to make, you know, extra offsets on all these lines, we could go in and make loop cuts everywhere. But what's cool about this tool is that we can just hold Shift and select the lines just like we did. Make sure you don't get any strays like that one I had. Let's just shift double click or shift alt click and that will highlight all these for you. I'll just do control Z and do the same thing over here. So now we've got everything selected, just the lines and we can do control shift R and hey, hey, there we go. We've got some offset loops. So we're just gonna do this just to get our little individual slides on our on our weights here. We just wanna do it just a little bit and you can come back in here and adjust it. Maybe turn on even and we'll just crank it down really small. Maybe like negative 0.75. And that's looking pretty good. And now what we're gonna do is go into face mode and select these and kind of shrink them down. And we could go through and uh, you know, just copy both sides and make sure they're exactly the same, but I'm going to show you a new trick. So we're going to go to edit preferences, go to add-ons and just type in mirror. And this is a tool called mesh auto mirror. So just make sure you have that turned on and go ahead and save. So while you're in edit mode, just go to this little edit tab and it should see auto mirror. And we want to auto mirror on the Z axis because we want this side to be the same as this side. So let's watch our modifiers tab. We'll just do auto mirror, bloop. And now anything that we do on this side will automatically happen on the other side. So very helpful. So the first thing we're gonna do is just shrink down our bar here. So just highlight everything. Make sure you have your x-ray mode on and we'll do scale. And we don't wanna just scale like this. We can scale and then type in Z. Uh, but that's making it more of an oval shape. Let me show you like that, like that. And we don't want that. So I'll show you a new trick. I'll just undo that. And we're going to do scale and then hit Z and hold shift and then hit X. So it's saying I want to scale on the Z and the X. So see how there's two lines. Now when we scale, it's going to drop down just like that. And we want it to be even with this bar. So just again, do S, Z, shift, X. And before we go, let's go ahead and save this project. So do file, save as, and we can call it loop cut offset. And so now we're just gonna make our way down this dumbbell and just move our geometry to fit around the dumbbells. So here we've kind of messed up. So here we may need another loop. So let's just do control R to do a normal loop cut and then confirm it. And let's just scale on Z, shift X. And just bring that down to maybe here. And then we can G and X and just bring that on over. Maybe somewhere in this ballpark. And let's do another loop right there. Click to confirm. And we'll do scale, Z, shift X, and just bring that up. Kind of make a little, little part there. And we'll do G and X to bring it over. And I'll maybe shrink it down just a little bit so it's more of an angle. So let's do scale, Z, shift, 
X and just bring that up. Even though it's not true to the picture, it'll be easier for the printer to print. And then we'll go back to our front view. That's looking pretty good. And now what we need to do is just loop cut in between these right here, these three weights to give them some curves. So we'll just do a loop cut here and just double click to confirm and a loop cut there. And again, if we needed to adjust them, we can double click or alt click and hit GG and just slide that around wherever we need. Maybe this one needs a little centered up. So we'll hit GG, center it up. And this one looks pretty good. All right, so now let's go into face mode and I'm just going to click on the actual edge here. Hold shift and alt click on that or double click. And we'll do the same thing for this one. And then we'll just hit S and do Z, shift and X. And just bring that on down somewhere Or maybe in that ballpark. And we may not need this line. So if you have uh, extra lines right here, let's just go ahead and highlight that and dissolve edges. That'll get rid of that. And we can do this one and just kind of shrink it down. S for scale, Z and shift X. And just kind of lower that, maybe hit G and X and bring it in a little bit. That looks pretty cool. And notice everything's happened on the side as well. So if we turn off our X-ray mode, it looks pretty good. And if you see little things sticking out, that's just part of our image that's uh, you know hanging out there. So nothing to worry about there. And we'll go back to our front view and we'll go to face and just draw a big box around all that. You wanna make sure you get this line too. So if you need that, you can do Control plus and that will add that line as well. And we're gonna go scale, Z, shift X. Bring it on down to funky town. Go to edge mode. We'll get that one and that one. We can scale, Z, shift X. Bring that down. Take that one, G and X, bring it in. Highlight all these. And if you need more, just control plus, and then S, Z, shift X. Bring these on down. Just rest it right on top of that one. We can go into face mode. Grab the little loops there. Notice I'm clicking right on the edge. That's how I'm getting the loop select. And we'll do scale, Z, shift X. Just bring that down. And then for these, we'll just grab the last ones. We'll do S on the Z and X. And I'm kind of pulling it too far here. So I'm gonna undo, do control minus, and that will decrease the selection and try it again. So we'll do S, Z, shift X, bring that down right there. So we're just landing right on top of that. So S, Z, shift X. And now let's just shift click this last one. Almost done. Do S, Z, Shift, X. And we don't need all that, so let's just subtract some of that. Do S, Z, Shift, X. Just bring that down. And maybe we'll loop cut this. Control R. Put a loop cut there. Loop cut here. Loop cuts everywhere. You can select this. G and X. Just bring that here. Double click or alt click there. Scale, Z, Shift, X. And grab that one. Scale, Z, Shift, X. And there we go. 
now we should have a pretty awesome dumbbell. So I'm going to turn off my x-rays. That looks pretty cool. I do think we can uh, round out our dumbbells a little bit. So one way we can do it is just use our destructive bevel tool. Um, I'll show you in future episodes how to do it non-destructively, but uh, since we're in the tools section, let's just use the tools. So let's just double click or alt shift click on all of these and go to our bevel tool and just bevel them things out like that. Maybe go to our segments, increase the segments, just round it out a little bit. That looks pretty good. And we can go back to our selection mode or hit W. That looks pretty good. The only thing I'm not really liking is I think maybe this needs to, this edge right here needs to just be scaled in a little bit. So I'm gonna do scale Z shift X. Just kind of bring that in a little bit. And there we go. Maybe G and X. Let me bring it out just a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty awesome. So now, if we go back to object mode, we can turn off our reference image and let's rename our cylinder. Just double click, call it dumbbell. And we are ready for 3D printing. So let's go to our 3D print toolbox. Make sure you have your dumbbell selected and we can go into edit mode and check all. So notice it says we have 64 non-manifold edges and that is because we have a cylinder with 64 edges. Notice if we turn our mirror off, it's just saying that's open. But when we go to export, it will actually apply this modifier. So I'm not telling you to apply, you know, keep this modifier where it is, uh, but I'm not seeing any other issues. So we have our overhanging faces, which is fine. We'll just add some supports and let's go ahead and export for 3D printing. So let's just twiddle this down, tell Blender where we want it to save. I've got my little STLs folder and export. Hey, hey. and there we go. So let's go ahead and actually I'm going to make one more change here. Um, since this little weight clamp is kind of angled in, I'm going to do the same thing over here. So let's just grab this and just scale Z, shift X, bring that down. Oh, I'm going to just grab this edge here and do dissolve edge. And then double click on this edge and do scale Z, shift X and just bring that one down too. Look at our front view. Yeah, so it's more of a 45 degree angle. So that looks pretty good. Now I'll export and that'll just overwrite it. And let's bring it into a slicer. So I got Prusa slicer here. Let's bring in our file, grab our dumbbell. And there it is. It's manifold. And let's go to our settings. Maybe do point 0.2 for the support material. Let's add some support material. And I want this to to try and bridge uh, for the the little bar part so let's see where this the little what part of the print so around layer 41 so i want supports all the way up to layer 40 42 we'll say so there's 42 layer 42 we'll go print settings make sure you have auto generated supports off and we'll do enforce support for the first 42 layers. And for the raft, I may add a few layers for the raft and let's slice it up. So there we go. We've got a nice, even nice flat, nice little raft, some support materials for all of our dumbbells. And then we'll get some bridging right here for our bar. Let's go ahead and export it and print that thing. 